Alright, so this video is basically a replication of an exam question, timed one, so we have 10 minutes to answer. Uh, so let's get to it, and let's get to it quickly. Explain the basic mechanism of how a bone heals after a fracture, with bonus marks for why do we use casts or internal fixings, why mightn't a bone heal, and what happens if a bone heals a little crooked. Um, so I think an important, a good place to start with explaining the mechanism of how a bone heals is by looking at the actual layers of a bone and what a bone is made up of. So the innermost layer of a normal long bone is the spongy bone. And, or, you know, people call that uh, the trabeculae. Yep. So, and outside the spongy bone is the stuff that we more generally m tend to think of when we think of bone. And that's the compact bone, so that's the stuff that's really hard. Yeah. So I'll just write that down. Compact bone. And outside this compact bone is a membrane called the periosteum. Peri so around bone, yep. And this periosteum contains um, fibroblasts, um, which can be purple, and it also contains. Um, progenitor cells. So they're kind of like stem cells, they can differentiate into other things. And a couple of things they can turn into that's important is um, chondrocytes and they can also turn into, I mean not chondrocytes, chondroblasts, sorry. Chondroblasts and osteo Glass. So that's important for this next bit. Alright, so that's our basic. Oh no, a bit more. Um, remember that bone is living tissue and it's highly vascularized. So there's. throughout the. there's all your blood vessels in there. Alright, so let's break this bone and heal it. I'll come down here. Yep. Alright, so here's our bone. So step one, first step is break. So let's let's break this bone. Alright. So what's the first thing that happens after a broken bone? Similar to when you break your skin or anything else is you get blood. You get a hematoma slash a fibrin clot. So we'll draw that in there. You know, you hematoma slash fibrin clot. That's the first thing that happens, yep. So you get your um ah. so after that, step two is cells within this hematoma die. Most of them cleaned up, so, um, reabsorbed by macrophages. Yep. So do some macrophages can be blue or whatever. Yep. Um, so cells die. Not all the cells. Some cells that are you know hanging around in this hematoma and on the periosteum, the fibroblasts, which can be pink. Fibroblasts survive and replicate. So we'll draw them all through here. Yep. And they form granulation tissue. That's what they make. Yep. Alright. And this happens, you know, within hours. 
equals hours. So what happens more days after, so this is with your normal break, um, is your progenitor cells, cells, they differentiate and um, proximal to the fracture gap. Oh, so, so granulation tissue, I'll just go back here. So here's our granulona tissue here, covering it up and all that. And that's more, um, that's type 1 collagen, I believe. Yeah. So proximal to fracture gap, the progenitor cells differentiate into um, chondroblasts so progenitor cells proximal to chondroblasts and they, these chondroblasts make um, higher line cartilage. So that's proximal. So more, you know, out here, make the higher line cartilage, yep. And what's interesting is the fibroblasts I mentioned before, um, they also turn into, or differentiate, differentiate into chondroblasts and make higher line cartilage. So that's more you know, right inside, in the middle of the gap between the two bones. So days later that becomes hyaline cartilage. And distal to the fracture gap, um, distal to FG, the um, progenital cells um, they develop into osteoblasts osteoblasts and they put down a osteo matrix of osteoid so I'll, I'll draw that in yellow matrix of osteoid that's more on this side here. Yeah. So first they put down this matrix of oxoid, which then they then convert into woven bone. So woven bone. I'll just do it a darker grey. Woven bone. Yeah. go and um, this hyaline cartilage plus woven bone is um, all kind of joins together and together is known as the fracture callus and this has some strength all right so that's good and this is day and now some stuff happens to the woven bone and the hyaline cartilage. So osteoblasts um, do stuff to the woven bone. What they do is through a process called, I think it's bony substitution. Bony substitution. That bone, woven bone is turned into a lamella bone and through a process called endochondral ossification endochondral ossification the hyaline cartilage is also turned into lamella bone now this lamella bone is actually spongy. So this lamella bone 
is a special word from what I understand from my reading is a special word for spongy bone so if we draw our bone here again yep. at this point um, so this lamella bone has now replaced it and around this time while this is going on things like the periosteum is also growing and new blood's being made just to Alright, so at this point we have lamella bone, and it depends on the break and the person, but this this part normally takes between 3 to 12 weeks, um, so it depends, so it's longer for like your tibia and stuff, and it doesn't take as that long for your collarbone, but at this point, 3 to 12 weeks, and at this point, most of the strength is restored. Alright, um, so this brings us to the final stage, I don't even know what number we're up to, but I'll say 5, and this is remodeling, so um, it's basically your basic bone remodeling, osteoclasts glass, not blast. They come in and they absorb bits of bone. So it's normally described as little pits. Uh, so they absorb little bits of bone. And the osteoclasts, I mean the osteoblasts come in afterwards and they deposit Compact bone. Yeah. So then they'll come along and from our spongy bone we get our compact bone. Probably didn't. My drawings aren't so good here. That's what it's meant to be look like, anyways. So they come back and they deposit compact bone where the holes were. Yep. And eventually, after usually three to five years, you got all your compact bone is back. We'll replace the spongy bone with compact bone. And the bone is again is up to full strength. And it's practically like it never happened. Full strength or near near full strength. So that's done. That's the mechanism of bone healing. So now for the bonus questions, uh, which I'll go through very quickly. Uh, first was why use casts and that kind of stuff. So I'll just run back to our original unbroken bone and we'll break it again. All right. So. break this bone, broken. If, if you don't have a cast on for most for, for most bones, it does depend on the bone, for, but generally if you don't have a cast on, your bone is going to be moving you know, up and down, back and forth, all over the place, the two ends with respect to each other. And yeah, because of this, your hematoma is not gonna, not gonna work. You're not gonna clot, and you, you know, you're not gonna actually get restitution or or healing of the bone because it's just gonna be moving all over the place. So, um, no cast equals movement. Clot um, slash callus can't form. Yep, and um, 
besides cast, you know, when especially when they're pretty bad, you can use wiring or plates or sorts of all sorts of things. So again, if we oh, so if we have this and you add a and you add a um, so if you add some screws and you tighten it all up, when you do that, you can actually get the bones really close to each other. And um, sorry. so um, wiring, etc. Fix bones close to each other. Um, less need for earlier steps. Um, go straight to um, so if they're really close you don't need all this granulation tissue in the middle and you can kind of just go back go straight to the um, osteoblast making woven bone. So, pretty simple. Um, so I'm trying to hurry things up a bit. So the, the second thing was um, why might and the bone heals. So the first thing is, you know, what I just mentioned, if they're not together, not together, and it's not fixed, is one big thing. Um, another thing is if there's infection or inflammation, you're gonna you know, it stuffs up all the blood supply, um, all the cells, all that. So you get avascular necrosis. And also, if you have um, massive metabolic bone disease, uh, MBD, all right, such as osteo osteoporosis OA, then you know, your osteoclast and osteoblast activities, you know, useless, or or you, and um, or, or you know, not how it should be. So decrease healing, and there's other things like if you smoke and drink, that's not good. All right, um, so quickly finish it off. Three, um, what if bones aren't set straight? So. I'll just draw some new bone. So if you have your bone and it sets you know, kind of like that, you know, rather than that, then what happens is you get abnormal loading. And that's sensed by the piezo piezoelectric effects, piezoelectric effects, since by, so that basically means pressure um, causing electricity, um, I don't think you need to understand exactly how it works, but the pressure is sensed, um, and this changes the activity of the osteoclast and osteoblast, so this will increase bone um, formation on one side and increase absorption on other so you can imagine you know this is say so your, your femur or something here and all this force is coming in it's going to put a lot more all the force is going to be felt on this side and less on that side so what will happen is that over time you're going to get increased deposition here 
and less on the other side, so it kind of thickens it where it needs to be. So the whole thing doesn't get thicker, but it, it gets it um, thickens where it needs to be to make it more able to resist those changes. Just try and get to the right. Very nice. Um. Yeah, that's it. Um, probably fizzed out a little bit there at the end, but that's the basic mechanism of bone metabolism with a few little bonus bonus things. Um, Alright, thank you for listening.